It's a new season. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. Not that we've not been here before. Welcome to Tuesday Night Training. In verse 18, we know that whoever is born of God does not what? Does not sin. That is a state of position. That's a position. To be born again is to be positioned. It's a state of being, of being positioned spiritually correct. It says, that's why it says, who's ever been born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God does what? He keeps himself from wicked influence that <laughs> causes him to touch and agree with the will of Satan. I'm going to say that again. It says, he keeps himself. And then it says, and the wicked one does not touch him. So he keeps himself from wicked influence that causes them to touch and agree with the will of Satan. This is an anointed place of protection. This position that we're talking about. It's an anointed place of protection. It is a place of sanctification. Because where the anointing is, it's been sanctified. The anointing dwells where there's sanctification. It doesn't dwell where there's not sanctification. Amen. It dwells where there's sanctification. Is everybody okay? Verse 19. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Because they're not under the anointing, are they? They're not sanctified. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding. Why? Because the anointing brings understanding. That we may know him who is true. And that we, and that, and we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Well, idols are things that are wicked influence. Amen? Again, through this, there is an anointed place, an anointed position. It's a place of protection because it's been sanctified. Only where there is sanctification does the anointing dwell. 2 Timothy chapter 2. That's why you pray. You pray so that you can shed all influence of wickedness and sanctify a place for the dwelling of the anointing. That's why we worship. When we worship, it drives out demonic forces and sanctify, uh, sanctifies a location so the anointing comes to dwell. Does everybody get this? See, so when there is, it's our responsibility to make a place for the anointing. Look at what Jesus, John the Baptist went before Jesus to prepare sanctification so the anointed one can come. 2 Timothy 2, verse 20. So without sanctification, will the anointing dwell there? No. no. And let me tell you, the anointing will lift just like that. Gone. Boom. Many people don't even know it, that the anointing is lifted from them because they're so busy, caught up in their mind. They're caught up in an emotional state of being. In verse 20, let's speak it. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Now, 
Vessels of gold and silver are used in the sanctuary. Wood burns and clay is breakable. That means cooperation or lack of cooperation will bring honor or dishonor. It says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for what? Honor and some for dishonor. So it depends on the cooperation. And that cooperation is making a place of sanctification for the anointing to dwell. Verse 21, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the ladder, if a person's cleansing himself from the ladder, is he making a place for sanctification? Yes. Then he will be what? He'll be what? He'll be a vessel of honor. Why? Because the anointing is what causes me and you to be a vessel of honor. What's the next verse? The next word, sanctified. And useful for the master prepared for every good work. Flee also useful, youthful lusts, which means lust of the past. That's why he says youthful, because it's associated with your past. But pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. And avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And the servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach and patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their what? Senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive to by him to what? Do his will. Again, we were just talking about that. It says that they keep themselves from wicked influence that causes them to touch and agree with the will of Satan. Again, if there's not sanctification, the anointing is not there. Amen? You can have all the head knowledge you want, but you will not be able to overcome with head knowledge. It says that the anointing destroys the gates of hell, not knowledge. Does everybody get it? Knowledge is connected so that we make room and sanctify for the anointing. Does everybody understand this? Knowledge is also used as armory, weapons. Is this too loud? Is it okay? okay. Praise God. So, in this, we're to depart from influence of past lusts, ungodly desires of sin, pursue, go after, grab hold, obtain righteousness, faith, love, peace, and associate with those who call all on the Lord with a pure heart. That means like-minded. Amen? We're to avoid foolish arguments and agreements. We're to maintain humility, accept correction, and hope of a true repentance, allowing truth to penetrate the soul. That way the person can escape from the snare of the devil that he's been or she's been doing his will. Again, without sanctification, there is no anointing. 1 John chapter 2. In verse 20. First John chapter 2, verse 20, let's speak it. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you what? And you know all things. You know all things. You know, why? Because if the anointing is there, you know all things. You are connected to past, present, and future. In the anointing, there is no distance of time. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, he is the Antichrist, 
who denies the Father and the Son. You got to remember something. Antichrist means anti anointing. So the enemy's function and purpose is to keep you unsanctified because he knows that the anointing can't dwell there. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father. Mm. He who acknowledges the Son as the Father, therefore, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If, you, if what you have heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I've, not, I've written to you concerning those who try to what? S deceive, steal, destroy, kill get you out of the place where the anointing does not dwell. But the anointing which you have received in him abides in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. Why? Because it says the anointing will let you know all things. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it is taught you, you will abide in him. So the only way to abide in the anointing is to make a place of sanctification. Amen. Amen? Know all things. In other words, if we are in position of sanctification where the anointing dwells, we will know. Now, how to maintain this anointed position will take what we call anointed faith. Anointed faith. Anointed faith is in a constant contact with the presence of God. We'll talk more about this. Anointed faith. I want you to grab hold of something. Anointed faith is called the shield of the Lord. It is the shield of the Lord. That's what anointed faith is. Of course, it is a constant connection to the presence of God. But this faith, which is anointed, is also known as the shield of the Lord. 1 Peter chapter 1. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 6, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. That the what? Genuineness of your faith. Genuineness. Uncontaminated faith. This is anointed faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy unexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Again, this is genuineness. It's like-minded faith. It's anointed. It's anointed by Christ. It's tested to determine the level of your faith. There's the master's level. When there's the master's level, it is called the shield of the Lord. This, is, this connection is constant. It is a flow of peace, joy, and righteousness. It's an area of service, stewardship, and life to the king and his kingdom. It's a place where you no longer live. 
You no longer are misled. You no longer are interrupted by emotional endeavors. <laughs> Nothing can penetrate the shield of the Lord. Nothing. And when things penetrate because it's not the shield of the Lord, as a shield that's contaminated. It's called the shield of faith. But when the faith is anointed, it's known as the shield of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6.10. I had another name for this teaching, but I think we're going to call it the shield of the Lord. <laughs> Glory. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the influence of the devil. Amen. Hello. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places and all their voices. Those are called fiery darts. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Against what? Evil influences the voice of the stranger and these fiery darts. Stand therefore having what? Girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, make sure you highlight that circle and put a star on it. Above all. Above all. I mean, come on, think about this. This was not by mistake that he emphasized above all. Take the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all fiery darts from the wicked one. When your faith is anointed, it is the shield of the Lord, and nothing can penetrate it. Nothing. No matter emotional, fiery darts, no matter nothing can penetrate the shield of the Lord. You will not be moved. You will not react. You will not grow weary. You will not be misled, because nothing can penetrate the shield of the Lord. Now, if somebody's foundation has got problems, when a fiery dare comes, they're trying to walk under a foundation like this. They ain't gonna do it. They're going to get snapped with every fiery dart. So if the foundation is not solid, the, the foundation is not level. And the fiery darts will penetrate and hit people. Why? The reason why the foundation is not solid is because it's not sanctified. There's still attachments to that foundation. There's still influence. There's still things. There's still entanglements in affairs of this world. That is causing unevenness. Above all, get positioned by sanctification, by your connection to the presence of God and the anointing, amen, the shield, you, it's, look at, so what happens in this, and when our faith is anointed, the shield is oiled. The shield is oiled. Do you know that they used to have to oil their, their equipment? That's what the anointing is. It's rubbing oil. So 
what happens is when the shield is anointed, that is able to resist all influence of the wicked one. You cannot fail. You cannot be moved because it now becomes the shield of the Lord. Able to reject, resist, ignore, overcome all fiery influential darts. It does not bother you. There is no effect to you. It cannot touch you at all. When you are carrying the shield of the Lord. But if there's contamination, if there's still resentment, if there's still jealousy, if there's still bitterness, that shield is no good. Now you try to resist it in your own strength, and you will not. It will affect you, and you'll make emotional decisions and emotional reactions. Even if everything is proven, even no matter what's in front of you, every fact can be 100%. But you'll still make a decision and choice by the influence. Is everybody okay? In Revelation 12. Remember, isn't that the bottom line that the enemy's always trying to influence us to do something stupid? Wrong decisions, wrong attitude, wrong assumptions. And because of the area of lack of clarity, because the anointing lets you know all things, Individuals fight and promote, and no matter what you try to tell them, they ain't going to get it. They just won't get it. 12, Revelation 12, verse 10. So you got to let them run the course. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's speak it in verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. They did not love their lives to death. That is the place to overcome. It wasn't just by the blood of the Lamb. It wasn't just by the testimony. That was a combination. It was by the arena because they wouldn't have a very good testimony if they didn't love their lives to death. And if the blood wasn't constantly activated in their life, they wouldn't be dead. They'd be alive. Amen? To self. Oh, therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell on them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that it, he has a short time. And this is where we are at now. He knows he has a short time. They did not love their lives to death. It is a position of sanctification where the anointing dwells. This is where faith is above human understanding. Because it is the shield of the Lord. 2 Samuel, chapter 1. Oh, happy day. Second Samuel chapter one. In 
in verse 20. Second Samuel chapter 1, verse 20. Tell it not in Gath, proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Let the daughters of the Philistines rejoice. Let the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. O mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew nor rain upon you, nor fields of offerings, for the shield of the mighty is cast away there. The shield of Saul, not anointed with oil. So he could not overcome because his shield was not anointed. Does everybody see that? From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, and the sword of Saul did not return empty. Again, this was an area where the shield of the mighty is cast away without the anointed oil or the anointing known as anointed faith. Isaiah 21. Shield of the Lord. That's why people fall. That's why they go back. That's why they react. That's why they make wrong decisions. That's why they allow emotions to dictate. Because they're not carrying the shield of the Lord. They're carrying their own shield. And it's easily penetrated. It's not anointed. The fa their faith is not anointed. They have little faith. Very little faith. They may say big words, but their faith is not there. Amen. Isaiah 21, verse 6. For thus has the Lord said to me, Go set a watchman, let him declare what he sees. How many of y'all know that the anointing allows you to see? And without it, you can't. The only thing you can see is everything pertains to you. Emotionally, physically, and mentally. Hurts, whatever it is. It only pertains to you. You can't see beyond you. Only anointing breaks it through. So you can see the full picture of what God is trying to bring. And he saw a chariot with a pair of horsemen, a chariot of donkeys, and a chariot of camels. And he listened earnestly with great care. And he cried, a lion, my Lord. I stand continually on the watchtower in the daytime. I have sat at my post every night. In other words, he was positioned. And look, here comes a chariot of men with a pair of horsemen. Then he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, and all the carved images of her gods have been broken to the what? To the ground. Oh, hallelujah. Now, in this we see that it was... Uh, I was uh, supposed to start at verse um, verse 3, so let's go back a little bit. <laughs> Therefore my loins are filled with pain. Pangs have taken hold of me like a pangs of women in labor. I was distressed when I heard it. I was dismayed when I saw it. My heart wavered. Fearfulness frightened me. The night for which I longed. He turned into fear for me. Prepare the table, set a watchman in the tower, eat and drink, arise you princes, and what? Anoint the shield. That was the only way that all of these things happened where he was able, where Babylon's carved images were broken because the anointing breaks. He had to anoint the shield to break the influence of ungodly idols. Those with anointed shields are called watchmen because they carry the shield of the Lord. They are known as watchmen. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. In Psalm 5, They maintain their position. They're not moved. Psalm 5, verse 11. Let's speak it. But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor you will surround him with a what? Shield. What shield is this? It's the shield of the Lord. I want you to grab hold of something. Faith and favor go together. Amen. Faith and favor go together. And of course, behind every anointed shield or anointed faith, which is the shield, behind the anointed oil of the shield of faith is a word called integrity. Not of self, but godly integrity. Behind the shield is integrity. It's not integrity of self, it's integrity, the character of Christ. Amen. Why would it not be the integrity of the character of Christ if it's the shield of the Lord? Amen? Is everybody okay? Yes. Psalm 18. Verse 20. Oh, hallelujah. Let's start at verse 1 for a minute. Let's go to first three verses. Psalm 18, 1 through 3. I will love you, O Lord, my strength, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I trust, my what? My shield. And the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. I shall be saved from my enemies. Go to verse 20. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He recompensed me, for I have kept the ways of the Lord, and I have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me. I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him. I kept myself from iniquity. Therefore the Lord has re recompensed me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. With the blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. With the devious, you will show yourself shrewd. For you will save the humble people and will bring down the haughty looks. For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by you I can run against a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is what? A shield to all who trust in him. Now, you can say you're trusting in him, but if your faith is not anointed, you really don't. You know, there's an area to where you won't trust him. See, anointed faith trusts every area. It's totally covered. And when that anointed faith is there, you are carrying the shield of the Lord. 
and nothing can penetrate it. Psalm 84. Glory. In verse 10. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents of the wickedness. For the Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will be withheld from those who what? Walk upright or with integrity. The Lord is our shield. Amen. I'm going to close at Psalm 89. Simple but powerful. In verse 11. Again, one of the things the enemy wants to do is penetrate with emotional decision making in spite of facts and evidence and so forth. The enemy will turn because that blinds. I can only share with you the importance of maintaining the shield of the Lord in our life. It's a place and position where sanctification to you is vitally important because without sanctification, the anointing does not dwell. It only takes a word out of our mouth to defile a place. One word will defile it and the anointing will lift. One decision will defile it and the anointing will lift. It doesn't mean God's forsaken us. He doesn't dwell where there's contamination. Amen? Psalm 89, verse 11. Let's speak it. Oh, yes. The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. The world in all its fullness, you have founded them. The north and the south, you have created them. To bar and Hermon, rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm. Strong is your hand, and high is your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your face. Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. In your name they rejoice all day long, and in your righteousness they are exalted. For you are the glory of their strength, and in your favor our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord, and our king is the Holy One of Israel. Our shield belongs to the Lord because it is the shield of the Lord. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you continue to anoint our faith. Help us to discern those things that are defiling. Help us to discern, to maintain a sanctified place for the anointing to dwell so that our faith could be anointed and that we could carry the shield of the Lord where no weapon formed against us can prosper in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God, oil up your shields.